I'm uh, Mark Post from Maastricht University uh, and from Mozambique. Um, I'm a medical doctor by training, but I use tissue engineering to create uh, meat from stem cells from a cow, um, specifically a hamburger that we launched in 2013 in London for the first time ever. We were the first to um, present this hamburger from stem cells. Uh, the idea was already older than that, but we were basically the first ones to really realize it. A registered trademark? Um, I don't think so. Um, we are producing a food. There, there are usually no registered trademarks in, in food. Um, so we probably are going to develop technologies that other companies that, are, that have brands uh, are going to distribute and sell. Maybe they have trademarks on it. We probably are not going to have. The reason to work on cultured meat is very simple, actually. Um, meat consumption will rise globally, and we don't have enough space on this planet to grow that amount of meat. So it's a food security issue. Uh, we also know that 15 to 20 percent of all greenhouse gas emission comes from livestock, and we want to reduce that, and you can do that with uh, cultured meat. Uh, and third, of course, there's an animal welfare um, issue with livestock meat production, and if you can mitigate that animal welfare, fair issues with cultured beef that would be very very nice. Of course the, the ethical aspects are very important because that is essentially what triggers or motivates people to buy this and to eat this. And so we are doing this to solve a really big problem and for that you not only need to develop the technology you also need people to start eating this and replace their current meat consumption with uh, cultured meat consumption and for that um, it has to be morally superior. I think it's going to be, it, it potentially has a health benefit as well. So one of the um, things that you can do is create fat tissue with more omega-3 fatty acids, so uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids that actually lower your cholesterol. That would at least mitigate the risk for cardiovascular disease. Um, other risks, as long as we don't know exactly what in meat actually produces that risk, um, it's kind of difficult to do that. But um, we, of course, if you grow this in a laboratory, or in a in a petri dish you have much more control over what components of the beef are in there that you really want and what components you may not want you might want to reduce we are developing this mostly in the Netherlands at the scientific level we have no connections yet with researchers doing this in Italy we get a few students from Italy that are interested and, and want to do internships um, in our place and they, they can also from uh, the, the acceptance studies there are some people in Italy uh, especially in uh, Parma, uh, who are working on this. And I'm also teaching a course at the Food Innovation Program in uh, uh, Reggio d'Emilia. How we came up with this, again, it's an old idea uh, put forward by Winston Churchill in 1932 already, uh, but the technology was not there yet. And, and nowadays in the medical field, that technology has been developed to create tissues um, from stem cells. And in the Netherlands, there was a guy, Willem van Eeden, who was really um, obsessed about this idea, and he coerced a number of of scientists, including myself, to start working on this and developing this. The idea is very simple. You take stem cells from a muscle from, let's say, a cow. You let them proliferate. They can do that very, very well. Um, and then you let them form tissue, which they're also pretty good at. They do that completely in a petri dish. And those tissues that you form, you can assemble into a patty and make a hamburger out of it. It's, it's that simple. We can, of course, we have more control over how the eventual product is produced. So we can affect the color. Um, color from meat comes from myoglobin. It's a protein in the meat that gives it its red color. Um, that depends on the oxygen level. If you reduce the oxygen level, meat becomes redder. If you increase the oxygen level, meat becomes paler. So you can do that. You can obviously change the texture by adding more fat tissue to it or less fat tissue. So there are different ways of, uh, of playing with both the, the structure, the mouthfeel, uh, and, uh, and the taste, of course, and uh, the color. When is it going to the supermarket? That's actually a very difficult question to answer because that's not only technology, but also sort of the price development and also how it's regulated. So in Europe, it has to go through the novel food regulation. So that means that it takes at least a year and a half to get approval that this is a safe product. We think that in about three years, we get products in the market that are relatively expensive. So not for supermarkets, but more for restaurants and, and specialty stores. When it gets down, 
down to the same price level as meat. I don't know. Um, that could be soon, three, four years, but it could also take longer. It's very difficult to predict that. The reason why we didn't keep it a secret was because it started as academic research and you want to, it's publicly funded so you publicize it and you, uh, it was also funded initially by Sergey Brin and he really wanted to be, this to be open access so that everybody could benefit from it and I, I like that idea. I also actually like the idea that now a lot of other people are working on this because this is a societal problem and it's not going to be solved by my lab alone. Other people need to work on this and, and preferably as many as we can uh, recruit for this.